I know. Which we are prefer? both. Um, well, I prefer artificial okay. because. Well, there's a lot of manual labor that right. goes into cutting one well, down. Well, you have to get it first, and how are you going right. to get from one spot to the other? I was in New York last week, by the way. They carry their trees down the street. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I did see people in Atlanta <laughs> doing it as well. I actually think the biggest thing is the pre-lit trees because lighting, getting the lights around it, then you do, then the light dies, and you're it, like, uh, I can't. It's a headache. Yeah, it's no. easier to just buy cheap lights every year and replace them the next year. I guess so. I just I like it pre-lit and... I don't want Every to year it. it's lit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, welcome into Weather Underground on this Tuesday. I'm Alex Wilson. And I'm Tevin Wooten. And whether it's a heavy rain or possibly snow, it is a messy commute home for a lot. The icy threat is going to be very much settled at the surface. Uh, this is known as the wedge. And if you're in the areas that are affected by the wedge, you have heard of it. Cold air damming, uh, something else uh, we'll often refer to. You've got an area of high pressure up over portions of, say, New England. That's drawing that cold air to the south. We've got something in the way, though, the Appalachian Mountains. So a lot of that air pushes south but isn't able to head farther west. Cold air is dense. It's going to stay closer to the ground. We've got warmer air that's less dense that will flow up and over that cold air. But here, that cold air is going to stay settled, very much focused at the ground. It's not able to get up and over the mountains. So you're not going to see this as an issue, say, in eastern Tennessee or parts of eastern Kentucky because those mountains are acting as a dam, keeping that air settled east of the mountains. You can see that very clearly here in our high temperatures on Friday. So from North Georgia around Atlanta all the way up into Virginia, those temperatures will be significantly cooler than even on the higher peaks. We've also got some very cold air here settled into parts of southwest Virginia. You can see some of those pockets of blue. That's where those valleys are. Take a look at the topography. As we look at a place like Roanoke, essentially this is a soup bowl. So you've got that cold air that settles in right at the surface. Well, it's not going to rise up and over any of these hills or mountains, and instead it's going to stay settled into these areas, these communities like Roanoke, like Salem, and a lot of people live in these areas, in these valley spots. So the valley spots where we're going to have the warmer air aloft, rain falling down, but that colder air right at the surface, so very likely that in a place like Roanoke during the morning hours of your Friday, we'll be looking at some of that freezing rain. So you look outside and it looks like rain's coming down, but it's freezing on contact with things like the road, the mailbox, and your car. Well, more coming your way tonight on weather underground parts of the uh, requesting lasagna, because lasagna is a tough one to make. You can't make it in college, and, and just in the dining hall, it's just not as good. But mom lasagna, top notch. Uh, right now in Worcester, it's 50 degrees, so it may not actually be the most lasagna of night. It's pretty mild across sections of New England. Uh, wind chill, exactly your temperature. Uh, we've got winds around 14 miles an hour. It's just not very cold. Uh, 58 in Boston. Who would have thought we'd be here on, what, December 10th, talking about temps near 60 in Boston, Massachusetts. It's a chillier rain in Albany, so you can see that Colder air is coming. It's off to the west, and it'll be headed our way. State College holding at 36 with clouds. Pittsburgh right at the 30-degree mark. So that cold air, not far, but New York, D.C. still enjoying the mid-50s with rain showers. We get you to the big picture, and there is the leading edge of the rain causing all the problems at the airports tonight. Plenty of delays once again uh, for, say, uh, the New York City airports. Newark leading the pack with delays of 109 minutes. That's just under two hours. Philly and LaGuardia under a half hour for you, but over 45 minutes there at Boston's Logan Airport because of the rain showers. And with rain continuing Continuing. I don't anticipate these numbers to significantly drop until the wet weather moves through. Tevin, it's just another night where if you're at those airports uh, yeah. watching, hey, hang in there. Hey, hang in there. Maybe you. go get another drink yes. or something like that. Have dinner out there in totally. the concourse because it will be a long night for delays. Let's uh, move to the upper Midwest. Uh, mention those temperatures tomorrow morning in a place like Minneapolis. Woo! Uh, in Chicago, we've got some cooler days. Highs in the 30s coming your way on Saturday with snow showers. So that's our second shot of snow. Uh, Tevin told us about the first one. By the end of the week and into the start of the weekend, our new cold front headed to the south. So that's where we'll be watching 
prepping for another round of snow and another push of cooler air to work in. As we head into the weekend, rain changing to snow around the Great Lakes as that cold air continues to slide to the east. So Friday night, we've got snow showers from Minneapolis, northern Iowa, just about all of Wisconsin, Chicago. Probably a mix of rain and snow before we transition over to snow showers into your Saturday. Rain and snow for a place like Detroit. Getting close to Indianapolis. Indianapolis, you may stay on the rain side of this. By Saturday night, at ending with a few snow showers in Indianapolis, Cincinnati, rain and snow, Pittsburgh, rain and snow, Charleston, West Virginia, rain and snow, Syracuse, rain and snow, rain from Boston down to D.C. with rain and snow showers and snow that'll linger in interior parts of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic as we get you into the second half of the weekend. Accumulations won't be huge with this one either. Again, we're looking at uh, generally one to three inch totals. That's the high side and that's going to be up around the Great Lakes and then uh, including some of those lake favored and high elevation areas, Tevin. Yeah, certainly not a blockbuster snowfall event. And of course, we can handle one to two inches of mm -hmm. snowfall there in the Great Lakes. And the farm where they had mini horses mm -hmm. every day. And she like considered it her good luck <laughs> before work. And she would send me pictures of the mini horses. And there's something. Selfies with the mini horses. Well, I don't think she ever took. I don't, this was before the age of uh, selfies. The age of self okay, all right. So I'm showing my I'm showing my age yeah. card. But yeah, we would like, and we worked morning shifts, so I don't think she was like oh, stopping yeah, to get out on the, the farm. Right. But and they were sleeping. Like let's not don't let's disturb not wake them up, the mini but, horses asleep. No, like horses are cool, but then mini horses are like next level. Yeah. I'm sure they will fight back if you wake them up. Yeah, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. They're also smaller and they're, they're quicker. Uh, welcome back into Weather Underground on this Tuesday. We are tracking rain across the Northeast. Gosh, uh, you're like, uh, didn't you say that yesterday? We did. We did. <laughs> and we're saying again. Downs once again. Newark has been a problem spot. Uh, as we go through the next several hours, we are going to see those mild temperatures that we have now drop. So colder air coming in snow showers coming in as well. Now you see the timing for the snow will be during the morning commute and beforehand, but I want you to look at the temperatures temps in the mid thirties, meaning I don't think we're going to be looking at any snow sticking to the road or causing slick conditions on the roads. However, it will be snowing, so that always slows people down when there are snowflakes falling. Uh, the good news is this shouldn't be a super impactful drive into work though, but I want you to give yourself extra time if you are heading into the office because because I think traffic will be slow given the falling precip. Uh, right now it's rain in Hartford, rain in Boston, rain in Bangor. Uh, you can see we've got a few snow showers back on the back side of this, particularly coming in off the lakes. And we'll be talking a little bit more about lake effect cranking up. Uh, Charleston, West Virginia reporting snow in 32 degrees, DC at 56. So still on the warm side. Temperatures have been awfully mild, but that is going to be changing. We look forward in time and you can see the rain showers eventually give way to a quick shot of snow by late this evening, portions of Pennsylvania, even around DC, but DC at 3 a.m. You've got the snow coming down, but the temperatures still in the upper 30s. So this is not going to be uh, something where we have to worry about that snow accumulating on the roads. Atlantic City, you've got some snow for the early part of the morning commute. Same for New York, but temps are in the mid 30s. Hartford at 32, 31 with some snow showers through the mid and late morning. So I want you to be cognizant of the bridges and the overpasses uh, through the afternoon sunshine returning to a lot of these areas and this is a minimal snow event. You can see one to three inches there along the I-95 corridor, but this is just going to be picking up on some of the grassy surfaces. And even there, I think we're going to be looking at very minimal accumulations given those temperatures, Tevin, staying above freezing. Yeah, boy, how those temperatures will drop overnight tonight. Yeah. And then, by the way, I'll just give the forecast away. Thursday, we're in the teens. Ah. Thursday morning, yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. I got goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> my little... My well, bundle little, up. Yeah, no, you know what? show off your winter spirit. When we get into January, then we're just depressed and crabby about it being cold. It's not cold now, though. So if you just hate the chill, you've been OK with today. Temperatures have been holding into the 50s throughout the evening. It's just raining. Now, the rain isn't making it ideal at the airports or on the roads, but I think a lot of people are going, you know what? It's not snowing and I'm OK with that. Now it is snowing in places like Charleston and as we move forward in time, expecting an Elkins, West Virginia, say parts of the 81 quarter could see a few flakes uh, around Winchester down to Harrisonburg, Virginia, DC 10 o'clock still dealing with the rain still in the mid 40s for New York City as well as Boston with rain showers. It's tomorrow morning that we're going to begin to see that rain transition over to snow and as it makes the switch from rain to snow, 
the temperatures are still above freezing. You can get snow with the temperature at the surface above freezing. What this means is that the snow is going to fall, it's going to hit the pavement, and it's going to melt. So I would not anticipate problems on the roads, especially for the major highways. These are just going to be wet tomorrow morning. With that said, 6, 7 a.m., snow falling, it's going to put everybody in a, you know, slower mood on the road, so to speak. So everybody's going to be moving a little bit more gingerly. Give yourself a little extra time. You don't want uh, one of those fender benders because you're looking at the snow and, and unfortunately didn't see somebody break in front of you. Tomorrow morning would be the time to watch for the snow. As I said, uh, allow extra time because Tevin, it'll probably still be a messy commute, yeah. even though we're not going to have slick roads. We're going to have wet roads. And wet snow roads. It's the holiday season. Yeah. The influx of You're people thinking, out on the oh roadways. gosh, I forgot yeah. about yeah. a present for the mailman. You know, it's <laughs> the best thing to remember this time of year. Of course, patience, but ice and snow. Mm -hmm. Take it slow. Oh. Think about all and the heavy yeah. equipment. Yeah. Or in the jacket, the pants. Yeah, not easy. By yeah. the way, the average human only runs about eight to 10 miles an hour. So yeah. uh, hey, let's run here to uh, DC. That's the north and west, which is a, a cooler wind and also a drier wind. 15 to 25 miles an hour. It will feel like the teens. Yeah, and those winds out of the west to mean cold air work over those still relatively warm lakes. And you know the deal. If you live along the Great Lakes, you're like, OK, it's time for that lake effect to pump up our, our dip in the jet stream separate that Arctic air mass uh, from parts of, say, the southern U.S., but that Arctic air working over those warm lakes will allow those lake effect snow showers to develop, and we uh, expect some intense fans uh, into parts of, say, southwest New York, north country New York, and also at times through parts of lower Michigan. You can see with those winds out of the west, we've got the snow coming down in Michigan, uh, areas north of Cleveland getting the snow, also parts of New York State. Uh, that Buffalo to Rochester stretch of I-90 features some heavier bursts of snow where you see the deeper blue. That's where the visibility is really going to drop. So uh, use caution if you're traveling that stretch. Also I-90 south of Buffalo, uh, both Buffalo and Rochester at 30 degrees, 32 in Erie, 29 in Cleveland. We've got much colder temperatures, though, as you head into parts of Michigan. That's where we're in the low 20s in Grand Rapids. How about upper teens in South Bend this evening? As we continue to deal with that, uh, that wind direction, and that cold air working over the lakes, you can see the snow showers continue to move at times shifting as the wind direction shifts. So we may be looking at instead of that westerly wind, more of a west southwesterly wind direction, and that will begin to intensify some of those uh, lake effect snow showers for areas north of Syracuse and between Erie and Buffalo, Tevin.